only an officer, Crichton. I can't help myself. I've always loved leading. Being a leader, doing leadery things. Oh. Bossing people about, sir. Exactly. <laughs> um, put that down there, will you? Oh, God. See, I loved saying that. Oh, um, to tidy that up and then put that back there. Oh. You see, <laughs> it comes so naturally to me. This about mooses. <laughs> Did you have to bring that? I'm next up. I'm the last human being alive. How can there be a queue? <laughs> Who's on the other lines? Now, look, I've spoken to three sales droids. You keep sending me round in circles. Who's at once a stare, master? So sorry for the delay. My colleague has just been filling me in with your situation, sir. Rest assured, we're all over this now. Name, please. I gave my name to the last droid, and the droid before that, and the droid before that. We have a system at all droids, sir, where if one droid collects information, they never pass that information on to another droid, as we never share your information with anyone, including ourselves. Or even you. That's how much we respect your privacy. So sorry about this, but we'll have to start all over again. Uh, my, my name's Dave. David Lister. Are you on a planet, moon, or ship, sir? For the fourth time, ship. Ship? Ship. Just putting you through to vessel delivery, sir. Don't, don't put me on... Lister, would you turn that damn thing off? I'm trying to revise. And what's the point of doing your Astros? Why beat yourself up? An education? You should try it sometime. Nah, it's never really a great speller. In fact, the school, they reckon I might be dyslexic. Mm. Were you ever tested for it, sir? People could read my graffiti. What was the point? <laughs> you know, you can get a note from your doctor if you're dyslexic, so you get extra time to finish the exam. They get all the breaks, those jammy dyslexics. Imagine having an extra time note. If I had an extra time note, I'd get it out everywhere. What, like parallel parking? Parallel parking, people watching, I'd get out my note. Taking a woman's bra off? Taking a woman's bra off. <laughs> Starting to panic, I'd get out my note. What could she say? I'd have my note signed by a doctor. <laughs> I'd get a whole extra few minutes before she could start tutting. <laughs> I'm taking an exam today and I need some help. OK. I'm dyslexic. And not just dyslexic. Matter of fact, I'm riddled with it. I see. How does your dyslexia manifest itself? Well, sometimes I get my merds wixed up and I don't even know I've done it. <laughs> I'm not comfortable wearing anything from FC UK. The whole thing's a nightmare with a capital K. You realise I'll have to perform a series of medical procedures to ensure you genuinely have dyslexia? Absolutely. I'll read that eye chart by the door. B-G-N-Y. That's not an eye chart, Mr. Rimmer. That's the exit sign. <laughs> oh, is it? I, I, I didn't realise. Besides, that's not the way we do this test. No? If you could just slip off your hollow trousers and hold open your buttocks, I'll grab my spatula <laughs> and we'll take a look. At what? Your dyslexia. How can you see it from there? Well, dyslexia is a medical condition whereby the patient has a number of warty outcrops on their large intestine. Are you insane? Of course it isn't. It's word blindness. Dyslexics of the world untie. This man walked into a bra, that sort of thing. How are you spelling dyslexia? D-Y-S-L-E-X-I-A. Gotcha! <laughs> oh, God. You've got to be a whole lot smarter, Mr. Rimmer, to outwit this many computer. Trying to pull a scam to pass the exam? Sorry, can't help you do that. <laughs> hey, no hard feelings. And uh, Lud Gak on the exam. <laughs> I think we all know the answer to this. <laughs> The rest of the ship? Oh, I want to see everything. Sadly, we can only show you one half of the ship because we've just uh, mopped all the floors on the starboard side and they're still really wet. <laughs> Accompany us, Hampton. Hampton! You go on, Gerald. <laughs> I've only got one. <laughs> I feel so much better now. Save your life.
How do you repay something like that? He died a hero's death. Well, he died. <laughs> it was a death. I wouldn't have said it was a hero's death. But, sir, he hurled himself in front of you. He saved your life. Mm, hurled or stumbled? <laughs> I'm thinking stumbled. I mean, a hurl to me is much more like... Whoa! Whereas a stumble, which is what he did, is more... <laughs> and I definitely think a... was involved. What about his light be? We can't just leave it. Well, he's not bothered. What's the big deal? <laughs> Crichton can clear him up next time he mops the floor. <laughs> I really love that guitar. You don't understand me. I hate you, <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Look what he's done. Look at it. It's so unfair. <laughs> You realize we are out of anesthetic? Yeah, it's only pain, right? I can handle it. Proves I'm alive. I embrace it. I laugh in pain's face. I chuckle at the smell of a newly drilled tooth, and the drill sound itself is like sweet music. And as for the brain smouldering agony, I've been told I'm not squeamish. I can certainly watch those medical programs where they pull a beating heart out of a human chest and still eat pizza. So. A new filling without anaesthetic. I say, come on, bring it on. Let the drilling commence. Your hologramic unit can be shut down now. So, I have a choice. Get turned off now, have a non-existence for the rest of eternity, or live a little longer and then get cooked to death. It's a real head-scratcher, sir. No question. <laughs> I need time to think. It's a bit like being asked what testicle do you want to lose first. It's not something you can jump straight in and say it's definitely the left one. You need time to think about Lefty and all the marvellous moments he gave you. Uh, this sun, it's one of the hot ones, right? 15 million degrees Celsius. What's that in Fahrenheit? <coughs> that is really, really hot, sir. <laughs> My name's Dave Lister. I've come to take my medical. Hey, your dad was in here only the other day, so you're the guitarist, right? That's me. <laughs> Mr. David Lister Jr., sir. Jesus. <laughs> Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just talking to my mate here. Oh, my apologies. No worries. <laughs> right, what were we saying? Well, just about how backward they are in this era. They haven't even invented horseshoes yet. They tie hide or, or plant leaves around their feet. <laughs> no way. Yes way. Are you serious? Totally serious. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Yes. What? Are you talking to me? Oh, no. I thought you spoke my name. No, I was just talking to these guys and I... <laughs> Are you... What? No way. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Bye. 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 Sorry. Sorry. No way. <laughs> Perhaps we could pre our way out of this or, better yet, I could baptise you all, the Romans too. But it's getting on me packs with all those stupid suggestions. I mean, baptise us all, as if we've got time to go swimming. The door's going. Quick, group together. Tight circle. In the meantime, I'll have a tinker with the rejuve shower. Are we in heaven? No, we're in the future. We've made great advances. We got lemons and bags. We gotta track this Jesus guy down. He's out of control. Look, I, I, and when we find him, we've got to tell him about all the good things that Christianity's done. Like, who's given that speech? <laughs> well, you've had a couple of good ceilings out of it, sir. <laughs> Come on. Guys, get your bugs. Everybody get some bugs. Do you see bugs, anybody? 
thanks. I never heard anything so stupid in my life. Well, these are the future, Mrs. You sick of dropping stuff? Hey. Problems are over. Hey, hey. Come on, guys, get your bags. Hey, you're going to pay me. Come on. Wow, it's absolutely massive. It's a monster. A large chicken donner combo, salad, chili sauce, everything. Over. How do you even eat it, Crichton? Is she coming with instructions? Enjoy, sir. All right, I'm going in. Have you lost me in a poker game? Like I'm some kind of thing to be lost in a poker game? <laughs> Trying to win Starbuck back. I didn't have anything else they wanted. I mean, I thought I was really in. They had three fives. How can I not win with three fives? Three fives isn't that good, sir. <laughs> Which is why I didn't gamble much. Just him. He says if the spoon controls all things, why are you trading it? Um, well, we just don't really use it much anymore. And, um, it's a good question. It's a bit like that ab crunch we bought. It just sits there gathering dust. Of course, when we first got the spoon, it was like every weekend. Oh, great. Let's control the destiny of all things. But after a while, your interest just drops off, doesn't it? You stop being mad. Eh? <laughs> so what is this place? It's the Erroneous Reasoning Research Academy, or ERA for short. Erroneous reasoning, what does that mean? Well, according to the SciScan, research tells us most of the great scientific breakthroughs come when two theories previously dismissed as wrong are combined to make a right. The DNA double helix was discovered in this exact way. Two wrongs making a right? Precisely. What did they do here? Well, they specialized in wrongness, sir. Wrongness? <laughs> the staff were handpicked for their ability to be mistaken for their gifts in fallacious analysis and defective reasoning. They were gathered from all walks of life and were all astoundingly good at being consistently incorrect. <laughs> there were a lot of referees, TV critics, weathermen, <laughs> who were then re-educated in the sciences to try and produce extraordinary new erroneous theories that would be combined together to produce works of great genius. You could have excelled here. <laughs> Did it work? No, the whole idea turned out to be wrong. The man behind the idea was so depressed, he attempted suicide. Uh, naturally, he failed and lived on into his 90s. <laughs> Look, we know the device was manufactured here. The key to getting out of this has got to be here somewhere. Well, logging on to the mainframe. Oh, interesting. Oh, there appears to be some kind of life form in stasis. Maybe we can ask their advice. Top floor. I press top floor. How come we're going down? Look, I'll press down. We're going up again. <laughs> Everything is wrong here. I don't think you're right, Crichton. <laughs> I really don't. Well, I assure you I am, sir. No, I like this place. I'm very comfortable here. <laughs> the smell, the atmosphere, it feels like home. <laughs> oh, it won't be air. It'll be someone else. It won't be air. I know it's not air. Don't even think for one second that I think that it's air because I know it isn't. I know it. Say it is. Do you think it might be? <laughs> it's got something to do with this coincidence thing? Well, it could, could be. be. <laughs> no, it won't be. There's no way. But if it is... And I get out of this groinal exploder, I'm going to be a whole different guy around there. <laughs> no more dilly dally. I'm going to tell her how I feel. And if she doesn't feel the same way, I'm going to say, this isn't about me in here. This is about the human race. Yeah. She's got to look at the big picture. <laughs> and OK, she may not be 100% happy about it, but too bad. We have to start breeding. <laughs> That's a great argument, bud. Put it to her just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sacrifices have to be made. <laughs> and if that involves making love into the wee small hours instead of watching those stupid infomercials uh. about face cream and super bras, I'm just saying I'm prepared to do it. Is she? <laughs> the door's opening. <laughs> Are we saying that she started out as human? Uh, she devolved, got less and less intelligent. 
maybe reaching the level of, say, presence of FIFA before finally winding up a chief. What an incredible story. And what a marvellous woman she must be. I feel a real empathy with her. Look, as much as I'm enjoying this chit-chat, hey, help me get this ball buster off. Officer Smegsky, how's it going, bud? You ain't? What in the name of Johnny Hellfish do you think you're doing? I'm buffing my new gel wraps. You're photocopying your behind using the captain's photocopier. I'm decorating my room. Making some wallpaper. You're going to wallpaper your entire room with pictures of your backside? Entire room? I'm not going to wallpaper over the door. I won't be able to get out. <laughs> not falling for that one twice. <sighs> Look... I've just had notification from the JMC's onboard computer. It's finally picked up on the fact that Lister and I haven't clocked into work for three million years. So you haven't serviced a bunch of vending machines for a while? Who cares? I'm getting demoted, unless I can somehow prove it's all Lister's fault. You're on report for this. Hey, look at this! When I get matching drapes, it's gonna look awesome! Sabutio tournament this weekend, Crichton. Not going out in the quarterfinals three years in a row. Just putting the boys through their paces. The flabsters don't know what's hit them. Madge the Scudder, better look out. Uh, an e-post from the JMC onboard computer, sir. Oh, yes? What do they want? Well, they've had a significant amount of letters over the years from high-ranking members of the JMC, sir, proposing you to be awarded the Golden Stripe of Honor for your years of distinguished service. Gosh. Really? How lovely. They say they've been told you're a modest man who doesn't seek the limelight. And any honor would probably embarrass you terribly. For your only concern is performing your duties. I'm lost for words. Such kindness. Uh, they say due to the number of these letters of recommendation, they have absolutely no option but to request you stop writing them. Oh, bollocking damn and jumbo buggers. They know it was me? They go on to say in dealing with the matter, they've looked into your actual service record and have realized that you haven't reported for duty in over three million years. Three million years? But I've been dead for most of that. You are therefore being charged with gross dereliction of duty. You have 24 hours to present your rebuttal. What? If they find you guilty, sir, you'll be demoted to third technician. Third technician? The same as Lister. There'll be no one but you to obey my orders. What am I going to do? Help me, that's an order. Oh, please, sir, don't order me to help you. You know how much I hate helping you. Crichton. Very well, sir. Uh, perhaps you could get a note from the medic computer explaining you're unfit for duty. Post-traumatic stress or something? I haven't been the same since the crew got wiped out. Need a note. Post-dated. Uh, too unwell to attend myself. Off you go. On my way, sir. Any luck? Oh, still nothing. Has this ever happened before, made a woman pregnant? I've had a couple of scares. Everyone's had a couple of scares, Listy. The entire whole world has had scares. Who hasn't had a couple of scares? You. Besides me. And I only didn't have scares because I was always very careful. I had a golden rule. Yeah, never date anything that doesn't come with a foot pump. <laughs> that is such a myth. That whole rubber doll thing. A few half-truths and suddenly it's an urban legend. It was blown way out of proportion. Well, it was that time you left the foot pump on and went for a bath. <laughs> I'm not taking the bait. Who was your first scare? 
Mrs Arkwright. Hmm, Mrs Arkwright. Quite a formal relationship, was it? Geography teacher. What was she like? Very elegant, very classy, but behind closed doors. She was dirtier than a car mechanic's keyboard. <laughs> so what happened? Well, she liked my essay on glaciated valleys, asked me to stay behind after class, and before I knew it, we were flattening the third year's papier mache depiction of the nativity scene. There were shepherds everywhere. Look, we're not talking near misses here, false panics. We're only dealing with blue stick bullseyes. Well, you can never truly know, can you? I mean, if a tree falls in a forest and doesn't ring and tell you, how'd you truly know? <laughs> but I'm guessing, up to this point, round about zero. Yeah, zero. I'm going for zero. And correct me if I'm wrong, but as the last remaining male in the universe, the human race is relying on your ability in this particular department, is it not? All right, Rimmer, don't go on about it. Pressure like that, thinking about it, the crushing force of expectation, the magnitude of the responsibility, the weight of the whole survival of a whole species on your two little nuts would make most guys <laughs> impotent, just like that. Well, I'm not impotent. What, since I did that? Have you checked? I don't think you have. Where are you going with this, Rimmer? I'm saying you had no success in this department when your sperm were young and goofy when they were out every night, frolicking and free. You've got old sperm now, Listy. They're not so sprightly. They swim into a womb and can't remember why they came in. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing, who they are, where they're going. They have to stop every five minutes and ask directions. <laughs> they don't want to break into any eggs and fertilise them. They want to watch Countdown and do crosswords. <laughs> What's your point? My point is, maybe this is a sign. You've got to make a new start, find a new woman, and turn her pea stick blue. Yeah, maybe. You know what? This is useless. I'm just not going to find it. Hey! What's the rush? Fish for supper? Fish! There's a boarding party rampaging through the cargo bay. Well, let's get to Blue Midgets and CB3. But it's in mid-service. It's got no supplies and it's only half fueled. We can pick up some supplies on the way. Come on, let's go. Death Ship and Three Annihilators at six o'clock, sirs. Death Ship Annihilators? Why can't they call their ship something nice? Who's their PR company? Scary or us? <laughs> I wonder if the horror theme stretches to all their tech. <laughs> Launch the nasty nukes. Load the unkind cannon. <laughs> I need to do a number two in the Toilet of Terror. <laughs> Question, can we stay ahead of them? Only if we have enough fuel, sir, two, maybe three hours. Asteroid field, 80 clicks west. Maybe offer some cover. We can't fly into an asteroid belt. We'll wind up holier than the Pope's string vest. <laughs> an asteroid belt is mostly made up of meteoroids, sir. A small rock's barely bigger than a snowball. Blue Midget should be able to ride the hits and avoid the larger ones until we can find an asteroid big enough to hide in. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Who the hell's doing this? Crichton, scan the local vicinity for any anomalous energy patterns. Everything's down, sir. We're on EPS, trying to reboot. So let me get this right. We're being attacked by something, but we don't know what. And there's no way of finding out what's out there. I have a suggestion, sir. What? How about we look out of the window? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the old ways are the best ways. <laughs> Do it. What, me, sir? On my own? Of course on your own. Oh, I love it when I get solo mission, sir. On my <laughs> way. <laughs> now, would you like a written report, sir? Or in these special circumstances, would a verbal account suffice? Get on with it, man. What's out there? A rogue simulant death ship. Death ship? Mm, yes, sir. Should we be concerned? Concerned would be an entirely reasonable reaction under these circumstances, sir. <laughs> we won't. 
Although the death ship hasn't indicated the exact nature of their business, I'm guessing it's something a bit deathy. <laughs> Tracking Hoagie, finding us just a bonus. Oh, simulant, sir. That's what you want to say. <laughs> simulant. <laughs> These are the guys who despise humans, right? And here, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Where, from where? Uh, should we go from Danny's lunch, okay. please? Yep. Stand by. And action. Simulants. Those are the guys who despise humans, right? The ones who won't rest until they've annihilated every single one. Mm. Once it was the whole might of the rogue simulant force against the might of all humanity. Now it's the whole might of the rogue simulant force against you, sir. <laughs> so, not me, then. Excellent. I'll be in the rec room reading this month's copy of I'm OK magazine. <laughs> uh, sir, make no mistake. We'll all be seen as Mr. Lister's lieutenants. They'll show us no mercy. Death ships are captained by special berserker generals who've been crossbred to create an insane biomechanical entity of pure evil. <laughs> well, we've got to get out of the abandoned ship. <laughs> That is the oddest experience I've ever had on Red Dwarf. <laughs> 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 <laughs>